We are, we are live here at Refinery 46. Now where Food by the Word is located at for today's book reading. I wanted to um, take a few minutes and um, read Food by the Word, read the, the book that I wrote um, actually three and a half years ago. Um, it's a system against the bear, I am the bear. And it's focused on, it's focused on exactly where we are right now. And it addresses, it addresses systemic racism um, from a perspective that you'll be able to speak to your children about um, these particular issues and, and, and hopefully this will be able to be a good um, opener for you to use with your children and grandchildren and I just want to go through, I'm going to read it, um, read the story and then I'm going to go through line by line and, and just kind of check out you know how it applies and give, kind of give you some um, depth to the layers of you know um, the issues and how they how they how they affect us on a day-to-day -day basis all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and get into it all right system against the bear I am the bear once there was a bear this bear was raised 16 years in a circus he was not treated very well in this circus in fact he was abused mentally and physically by the people who should have taken care of him and his needs as part of the circus family. He was beaten with sticks and fed only scraps from the ringmaster all of his life while being screamed and yelled at daily. He had grown very angry and disconnected from the people that he would always see and from, from those that would come to, see, to watch him on display. Once he was 16 and no longer cute and innocent looking, the circus set him loose in the forest wilderness where he never learned how to survive or live in the forest. And then expected him to just adjust and live life like all of the rest of the forest animals with no problem. As it came time, there was a group of park rangers. At the same time, there was a group of park rangers that patrolled and watched after the forest and all of the animals every day. They all took the jobs of park rangers because they loved the forest and the animals and wanted to take care of them and make, the, and make sure that nothing would destroy or damage the forest or, or harm the animals or hurt the animals. Now the park administration that oversaw hiring and paying park, park rangers and providing the, the needed tools for them to use would only give them the cheapest tools available and they would restrict them from doing the necessary things in the forest to keep it safe. They were not allowed to use the needed equipment to patrol and protect properly, and they were understaffed for the size of the forest, and the park administration would not hire any more rangers because they didn't want to pay the money, even though the money was available. One day, as the bear was walking through the forest, trying to find something to eat, he realized that he'd never been shown how to forage or how to hunt for his own food. As he was, was only allowed the food that the ringmaster would throw to him, he walked and walked through the forest, getting more and more hungry every hour and every day until finally he came upon a campsite. Now, he had no idea of what he was seeing. He saw some people sitting around, laughing and enjoying themselves and eating. He watched them for hours, and later that night, hungry and alone, he said to himself, maybe I can go down there and get some food from, from them because I'm so hungry. So he went down to the campsite looking hungry and humble, and the people at the campsite saw him and started screaming and yelling at him and told him to get away from their campsite. Keep in mind, the campers have always been told to watch for the bears and that they should fear them. So the bear retreated into the forest, very hungry and sad. And after a few hours, his sadness turned into anger. And he told himself, if they don't want to help me, I will just go down there and take it from them. And that's exactly what he did. He went right back down there, growling and roaring, and took all the food that he, that he could carry and ran away into the forest. The campers then ran and found one of the park rangers and told them what happened. 
the park ranger immediately called for the other park rangers and that were available and they went after the bear now they only had the information provided from the campers to go on and as such no idea about what the bear had experienced or why did why he did what he had done and due to more budget cuts the park rangers were only issued sticks and handle and to handle these situations in the forest and had very limited access to one big gun between them to use in only the most dangerous of situations so the park rangers looked all over the forest for this bear and after a few minutes one of the rangers found him in his lair he approached the bear screaming and yelling at him with his stick in hand and all the all the bear could remember was the ringmaster when he would when he would do that to him and beat him all the time the bear had the bear who who had gone through so much decided that enough was enough and that was and that he was not going to let anyone beat him with a stick anymore anymore he grabbed the stick from the ranger and growled at him very angrily and the ranger was very scared and he ran away to get the other rangers when they came back to the lair they came with the big gun and more sticks as they started to yell and scream at the bear again and wave their sticks at him the bear started to growl and to charge at them and and he was backed into a corner and feared that he was that he was about to be beaten again suddenly there was a loud bang and everything stopped and the bear stopped one of the rangers had shot and killed the bear in this brief story the bear depicted in is the black man in america which is the circus we have a great divide that has two sides us and them as we are taught by our culture but the overall issues are processes built into our system that allow this cycle to continue and why both sides are being pitted against one another I speak with my father who is in his 80s and his whole life he has learned to fear the police. I have also spoken to police officers, which are the park rangers, and they feel overwhelmingly unappreciated from the community and from those that, they are, that are over them. I use the bear as an example in, in my story, even though bears in our country share a far greater sense of protection and service than black men do and are cared for far better by law enforcement. But instead of blaming police officers, we must instead blame our system and demand the, and demand the, the re reconstruction and of our criminal systems and educational systems. We are, live, we are leaving ourselves behind by ignoring these great and real issues and expecting them to go away. Time to stop pointing fingers and time to address systemic racism, financial racism, and educational racism. These are real things and real issues, and if we cannot or will not be honest with ourselves, we will never grow forward. And like I said, I wrote this, I wrote this three and a half years ago, you know, while it was burdened on my heart. And now we're in 2020, in October of 2020, and the issues are still as prevalent as ever. Um, but now we have more visibility about the issues and it's imperative that as we start to address them that we actually understand systematically what we're dealing with because these issues are, they're not just because of this person or that person, they're because of the system that's been developed over hundreds of years to act actually the way that it's acting you know up until now but now we have technology so we actually get to see these things happening on a regular basis and so now as we go forward um, I'm going to kind of just break down a little bit and give a little bit of context you know when I say systemic racism you know how it applies to the bear in his life and um, we're gonna kind of go from there and to give a little backstory see this is the first in, in a multiple of series of books that we're going to that we're going to be um, producing, um, that are going to come, that I'm gonna probably be putting out over the next, um, well, over the next, least ways over the next year or so. And what I'm, this is actually the end. 
This is actually the end. And so the next books in the series are going to show you what led up to this generationally. Um, Cause this, the, the bear that's depicted here is actually the grandson of where the story is going to begin. So this is the grand, this is the grandson of, of where the story is going to begin. But I'm just going to you know, take a few minutes and kind of just break down. Um, okay. Said once there was a bear. This bear was raised for 16 years in the circus. Now the circus is America. The circus is 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 is, is the symbol of America. And what this demonstrates is the bear was raised for 16 years. So from birth up until teenage years, you know, the bear was raised in in, in processes and you know held in 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 situations that were out of his out of his control. He was born in poverty. He was raised in poverty, and in such he had access to to very little. He had access to very little food, very little education, very little you know affection, you know very little guidance. And on top of that, you know he was very hungry. A few years ago, you know we engaged some young young men, and that were that were that were close to our family. And I realized for the first time that feeling, and I had to take myself back to when, you know, when I was the young, when I was the, you know, the young bear. And, you know, I guess I'm an older bear now, <laughs> you know, praise God. But it's been, it's been a struggle. But when I was a younger bear and how hungry that I was when I was a teenager, even though we had just enough, but how hungry I was. And to me, that was normal. That's just, you know, because that's all I knew. That's all I knew. I had no idea that this was not the norm in my country. And I say my country, see, here's the thing. We don't have multiple Americas. Well, we, you know, you know, we have, you know, in, the, you know, in this hemisphere, we have you know, North America, Central America, and South America. But in North America, you know, in the United States of America, and you know, this is my United States of America, just like it's your United States of America, just like it's your United States of America. And in my United States of America, I have never appreciated the benefit of this country that I love, my country. I've never, you know, and I did not realize that it's not normal. It's not normal, you know, the things that I go through. It's not normal to be hungry as a, as a, as a young boy, as hungry as I, I mean, you're a grown boy, but the fact of the matter is, is, and I handed, I handed a young man, you know, a young man, uh, a snack bar, a snack bar, and he gobbled it up so, so, you know, voraciously. And I was like, you know, I'm like, I remember that. I remember feeling that way. And I'm like, here's the reality. You know, when we think about the young bear, and I had already written this story before I even, before I even encountered that with him. But we think about the young bear and that hunger, that hunger that, that, you know, we should not have to be that hungry in a country of plenty. You know, we should not have to be that hungry. But unfortunately, due to systemic racism, you know, there's levels. So you're born in a station and this is the station that you're expected to be in, period. You know, you're not expected to rise out of this station. A couple do here and there, you know, but they're not the, they're not the, the rule. They're the exceptions. And so, you know, it's important for us to really keep our eyes stayed upon this. Okay. I'm going to read a little bit more. Okay. He was beaten with sticks and fed only scraps by the ringmaster all of his life. Now, the ringmaster symbolizes, of course, you know, symbolizes authority symbolizes authority in the circus, you know, which is America. And so this bear was only fed scraps and beaten. So he was, he was constantly beaten and berated by the system all the way up until when he was 16 years old. And this happens every day. You know, one thing that we've, we've you know, in some of our neighborhoods and as I drive around in Annapolis, I see it quite a bit. I see it quite a bit on a regular basis. And I made a post about it the other night, you know, a lot of the houses that we lived in growing up have been tore down and, and are being tore down, you know, and I see literally the city, the city is like a, is like a graveyard. I mean, it's literally like a graveyard and it, and it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. I mean, I, I mean, we've seen so many young bears just, just don't get to make it. And it's, 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 it's like the wilderness. And when you leave it, you can really see it for the wilderness that it is. And, 
you know, as, as, as I go around in Annapolis and, I, and I, I encounter different people in different places and I, and I envision, you know, what's coming, but I remember what was. And I remember, and I talked to my father who's 83, and he remembers in Indianapolis in such and such a way. And when we moved here in 1984, you know, we knew in Indianapolis in such and such a way. And all of that is, is, is dead, it's gone, you know. And there's a lot, there's, you know, blame doesn't fix things. And that's, that's, a, that's a reality that I've, you know, God put on my heart years ago. Blame does not fix things. I mean, it'd be nice if blame fixed anything, but blame doesn't fix anything. Fixing things fixes things. And as we grow forward, you know, these are the things that we have to, you know, be honest with ourselves about, you know, and when I look at, you know, and I use Indianapolis because, you know, we got blood in the soil, you know, I'm invested in Indianapolis and I'm always going to be invested in Indianapolis, but I use Indianapolis as, as a picture of the wilderness and how unsafe it is for our young black men. You know, Indianapolis is not a safe place for young black men. It's not, you know, my son, my son refuses to live in Indianapolis. You know, he was born in Indianapolis, but he refuses to live in Indianapolis because it's not safe. And I, and I don't blame him. You know, I don't you know, I don't second guess. I mean, it's dangerous everywhere, but some places are, you know, a degree more dangerous than other places. And what does that mean? So what is it? You know, well, it's not dangerous. No, nope. just for him being a young black man. Unfortunately, being just being the young bear can get you killed. I know this myself because I was once, you know, I didn't, I wasn't doing anything many a time, many a time, you know, situations occurred. And even with the park rangers or law enforcement, you know, there would be issues that would occur that were out of my control. I mean, I would just literally be walking from my sister's house in my neighborhood, going home like I'm supposed to in the middle of the day. And I would be accosted by law enforcement for no reason, for no reason at all, literally for no reason. You know, just so from her house to my house was always a journey, <laughs> you know, and it was only like three blocks, you know, it was always a journey just to make it home. And even even when, you know, when I make it home, you know, we, you know, there was times when me and my friends, we were accosted in front of my house, you know, by by other young bears. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's the, the system, the environment that's created, the environment that's created is very, very um, carnivorous and it just it just goes around and just you know devours and devours and devours but that's systemic you know I can paint a you know picture all day long but you know overall it's systemic so let me go on a little bit further here now one of the things I like to approach as well now this is gonna be this is gonna be a different wrinkle it's gonna be a different wrinkle this is about law enforcement now um, you know one thing that I've, I've learned from my years of dealing with um, different law enforcement um, individuals and so forth. This is why I know it's, it's systemic. You know, I don't just think of that as systemic. I know that it's systemic because my conversations with them. I've talked to a lot of different police officers, all kinds, black ones, white ones, you know, higher up, lower down, you know, new ones, you know what I'm saying, old ones. And the perspectives are very interesting. But, I, you know, a few years ago, I had an opportunity. I ran into one of the former chiefs. Um, for um, IMPD um, at the gas station. It was one of those times when I, you know, I actually, so I pay attention to what's going on in the city. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, let me tell him, cause I'm like, things are kind of going okay right now. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, 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 I'm gonna give him his props. So I went up to him just, you know, at a gas station. I said, I said, thanks for what you're doing, you know? And he said, he said, I appreciate that. He said, I appreciate that. He said, but you know, you know, you know, we're trying, we're trying our best, you know, but you know, it's hard to get the support it's hard to get the support from the top that we need in order to really do what we need to do. This is from the chief. This is from his mouth to, to me. You know, I'm, you know, Joe Blow citizen talking to him. And he, and he, and he, and he, and he told me that and, and, I, and I got to, I'm, I'm thinking and I'm like, okay. And then I talked to other officers and everything and I'm like, interesting, you know? And I, so I started to really understand and then, you know, I watched the news like everyone else. And I see how, you know, money's being allocated or, you know, there's there's certain federal money that comes into the city for for use that can be used for body cams or what have you. That's not being used that way. You know, instead, we're building, you know, cricket parks or, you know, things that nobody uses. But we're spending eight million dollars over here, but we won't spend six million dollars over here. You know, let's just, you know, let's reallocate that money. I mean, that's that's just the reality. So. 
you know, when I put these things together and I'm like, and then I look at the training aspect. Cause I, like I said, I talked to a lot of different officers and every officer is not on the same level. I'm just going to be honest with you. Not that, and you know, we hear that there's good apples and bad apples. Well, sure there's good apples and bad apples, good apples and good anyway. But there's better trained and not so better trained. And the reality of it is, is once a police officer gets onto the force, it's really up to them on the level that they're going to maintain themselves at. And those are the officers you're going to come in contact with. Here's the reality. When you come in contact with the officer who's really adamant about his training, staying up on all the, you know, latest equipment, staying fit, staying active in the community, in his life, you know, and so forth, you get a different response. Well, you get an officer who likes to, I'm just going to put it out there, likes to, you know, you know party all the time and, you know, likes to hang out and likes to, you know, you know, look at the those who he's serving as those people. This is, con I mean, this is conversations that I've had, you know, well, you know, over there, they just, they just, you know, they just, you know, these people, they just, you know, just do whatever. I don't want him pulling, and I get pulled over a lot for whatever, it just is what it is, you know, I get pulled over a lot. I get pulled over a lot. I mean, I've been pulled over a lot. I mean, I've been pulled over so many times, I think I work for the police force now. I don't know, I pull myself over sometimes. I mean, but the, the reality, the reality is, you know, they have control of their own personal fitness and training and so forth. Sounds great on one hand, but on the other hand, you're dealing with somebody's life. Because when the call comes, you never know who's going to come. And I've personally, visibly seen an officer handle somebody who was out of their mind. You know, he was, you know, I had to call him because I did security and that's how I interacted with so many. I did security and I actually had to call him because there was somebody who was, he was delusional and he was definitely having a bad night. And the cops came and they handled him so well. Now, this is where a color issue comes in at because now if, if he was a black man and he was a white man, I've seen that go differently. I've seen that same situation. Now, mental illness, mental illness. The way that this was handled was totally different was totally different. They handled him very well. And I'm, I'm watching, I'm like, I'm like, so I know it can be done. I know this can happen. I know this is a thing, you know. But I've seen that happen time and time again when it didn't go that well. And so, I, you know, you have to, you know, question time by time by time because here's the reality. Here's the reality. As somebody who, as a black man who, get pulled, who gets pulled over, I never know if that's it for me. I don't. You know, I have nerve issues and I might be fidgeting in some kind of way and, you know, I might have to, you know, you know, I might have, you know, my leg might start hurting me real bad or something, you know, because I might get nervous, you know, and everything. That might be it for me. That could be it for me. You know, it could, it, that could be my last day, you know, depending upon who, who, who I get. But if I get, if I get the right officer, it's a great day. How you doing, officer? I'm gonna make sure you're okay. You know, <laughs> you know, I want to make sure you're okay. I got pulled over just the other day. You know what I'm saying? And I told, I mean, and here's the thing. And from law enforcement agency to law enforcement agency, you see a vast difference. You see a vast difference in how things are done. So I can't say that it cannot be trained. I'm gonna be honest with you. In Indiana, if a state trooper pulls me over, I feel a whole lot more comfortable than if maybe a, a city cop, depending upon what city I'm in, because I'm going through a lot of cities, pulls me over. They handle themselves very professionally. I mean, I've been pulled over enough by them, I can kind of tell, they handle themselves very professionally. They just do. I, so I know it's a possible thing. I know it's a real thing. And so even here in Indianapolis, I see, I, I see the level of, um, of professionalism between different officers. I say all that to say, because based upon which officer you get this day, is going to be based upon whether you go home today or not because you were hungry. Because you were hungry and because you were put in a system, you know, because the officer, he has no time to assess you at the time. And this is why we have to really assess and develop how we send officers to different, you know, I'm not going to get into the, you know, how we know need to reconstruct it, but it needs to be reconstructed. The fact of the matter is, if somebody's having a mental issue, that doesn't, that's not, that's not, that doesn't mean he should die today. Or if somebody has a you know a physical issue, that doesn't mean he should die today. Or if somebody has black skin, that doesn't mean he should die today. You know, and so this is this is why it's so imperative that we start talking to our children. And so that's why I wrote this. This is this is for parents to share 
with their children and their grandchildren. You know, I wrote this. You got to read it yourself first. So that way you get your mind wrapped around how you're going to approach your children. But your children need to be aware of systemic, systemic racism. How do we dismantle systemic racism? Well, first we have the conversations. We have to start having the conversations with our children and we have to start breaking it down with them step by step and because and, and, they're going to have questions. Why? 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 Well, the reality of it is, is a lot of us are very uneducated to the why. It goes back hundreds of years. This didn't just happen. It's not this stuff happening now. This has been going on for 400 years since slaves got off the boat. Well, since we got put on the boat and then got off the boat. This is not new. The reality of it is, is we have to, you know, and I spend a lot of time and I, I can go a little deeper, you know, you know, the Constitution, you know, because I you know, actually read that thing. You know, the Constitution gives us an eligible rights that we're just not getting. And, and when these rights were given, even, you know, we were terrorized. And unfortunately, a lot of them are, you know, that are, you know, we have rights that are not being upheld systematically. You know, we have, you know, the access to, to the economic um, um, machine. We don't have the access that, that we should have. You know, even I'm talking about by rights, you know, based upon the Constitution. Now, there's some things. That's why there's constantly being um, new amendments and so forth. And that's why we constantly have to go back. That's why it's a constant fight, because we have to get we, we're going from a position of of being in slavery. To being freed. Well, we went from being property. To being persons. There wasn't a class, a course, a seminar, you know, people were and there wasn't a transition period for 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 this. So the reality of it is, is when you go from property, just just take, you know, just think about this. You know, when you go home today, and you look at your property and then you think about it, you know, you think about coming back tomorrow and your property is like you don't get to use me no more like this. But you got to, you know, but but matter of fact, I got the same rights that you have. It doesn't sound pretty, but it's the truth. It's the truth. So when you think about that in the context of, okay, well, you know, you went from a, a place where you had value. You had a dollar amount value. Now you don't have that value and you want stuff and you want to be part. Now you want the same thing that I have. You know, that's not a, that's not a, a easy thing to, to transition through. And so, and we've never, and that's where we're still at. We're still transitioning. We're still transitioning, you know, and the, and the laws have to be adjusted, you know, to reflect not only the rights that we've got, but they have to be able to uphold the rights that we have. And so, you know, just, you know, just a little bit back and forth. Now, like I say, get a lot deeper for a kid's book, but but this is not just this is a children's book for adults. Plain and simply put, because these are conversations that we have to have. We can't we cannot continue to go another another week month year in the condition that we're in now and so as we grow forward you know you know i pray you know and i pray constantly i pray without ceasing you know and i know god is he's doing a thing he's doing a great and mighty thing and i know through this thing that he's doing you know we're going to come out you know strong